Welcome to another weekly edition of Arizona Real Estate News with Pat. What's my rate? McMaster's dynamic duo of Ruby and Jackie with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. Happy Thursday. Yeah, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Today we're bringing on later on we're, we're gonna we're gonna hit some real estate data we're gonna talk about what happened in the mortgage market uh, yesterday and this morning and we got a special guest um an insurance person who's going to try and explain to us what's going on with uh homeowners insurance and uh, especially in california and florida but we want to look at you know does this mean anything for arizona because i think it's uh, first and foremost on a lot of a lot of people's minds you know everybody's talking about water and out there in the background, water seems to be doing okay, but there's this hiccup of insurance rates flying over our heads. So I want to take a peek at that today and see if we can, if it's anything to worry about or if we can sleep at night. So so I want to go right to our real estate numbers first. Our average sales price per square foot has been climbing since you can see. There's been some ups and downs, um, but it's it's on the way up, and it, it said here in the Cromford Report, uh, Michael Orr makes the comments and says, we can see that the low point of mid-January is $264 a square foot is now way behind us, and the average sales price written about $287 per square foot as of June 12th. That's a rise of nearly 9% in five months, the equivalent wow. of annual appreciation over 20%. Who'd have thunk? Um, then they well, say, Well, I did say something. <laughs> you did, you did, yes. You, uh, we might have to pull that clip up. This is probably a great disappointment to the Federal Reserve buyers in general, and especially to the doom mongers who predicted the great housing market crash 2023. But it goes on to say, and I'm going to kind of pull up some of the numbers here in a second. It says it should come to no surprise that those that keep track of the Cromford Market Index, the CMI has been issuing strong positive signals since January. So I went back and looked and here we are in January right here. It was coming up. And this is the daily CMI, Cromford Market Index, kind of flat lining over here a little bit, not turning. But then I go take another look at the CMI and the signals that we got. Well, this is, before I get to that, here's the long-term monthly average sales price per square foot. Now, why do I have a red circle right there? Well, our friend at ReVenture Consulting, this is when he came out with this video and said, that's the peak of the market. Real estate's going to crash right there. And um, slightly off. Um, just but, a tad. <laughs> just a tad. I'm going <laughs> to uh, I'm gonna show maybe kind of sort of why he got drawn into that a little bit. And uh, because, you know, whenever you look at a long term chart like this, it's it's easy to just laugh at somebody and say they're wrong. But I also went to look and said, well, what were we looking at in June? And so you look at the Cromford Market Index here, and here it is in April, May, and June, and it was clearly coming down. So that was an indicator that prices were going to come down and supply what happened in June. As you look here, this little blip up here, supply was starting to increase. Then things turned the other way and demand in June, let's see here's January, demand in August started going back up. So that made the total market change again. So that CMI started going up. Then we had the rate increase, right? CMI dropped, now it's going back up. So I guess the lesson learned here is that, um, um, you know, these short-term moves that you see you shouldn't jump right on the bandwagon and say, okay, this is it. This is the end. You got to let it play out for a while. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, it's, but Rick, can uh, I say something? Yes. Here's the thing is that I think we all knew that the rate lock thing was going to happen. And that's why I anticipated that we weren't going to have that big of a, I mean, we, we had a crash in transactions. That's what I kept saying was going to happen. We're going to have a crash in transactions because we weren't going to have any inventory. And yeah. that's exactly where we're at. And I think that's a big factor right now on why we don't have more transactions than we do. We don't have the inventory and right. people don't want to walk into things that they have to do any work. They have that mentality that if I got to pay these kind of interest rates and these kind of prices, I want something that's ready to move in and I don't want to lift a finger. Yeah. I saw um, um, a financial guy um, on an article. I think it was MSNBC. He was on a news show. 
And he was saying that he was talking about Pulte Holmes. Was it Pulte Holmes? Um, no, I'm sorry. It was Lennar. And he shared some statistics and said Lennar homes were selling at about three homes a month per community prior to the pandemic. And then that number jumped up to six homes per community per month during the pandemic. And everybody said, well, I want out of the apartment. I'm going to go to a, get a house now. And he said, then we dipped down for a little bit. And now we're back at six homes a month per community. And their earnings are very strong. And he said, they're getting tremendous growth on their entry level homes. So they're going to continue to ramp that up. But he said, you know, they're able to buy down the rates and people, that's the only place where people can find, you know, some variety in homes. So, mm -hmm. um, well, Pat, what happened with rates? Yeah. I, can you share a chart there for me? Oh, yeah. Uh, my bad. My bad. I thought I did. Yeah. My, oh, not on top of it today. <laughs> wake right, up. Wake you, up. Uh, You're not on the boat, Pat. You're not on the boat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to have to call the union. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just, no, I, even, I, mean, I even... I even sent a private message that said, Pat, share your chart, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, yeah, much, voila, not much reaction. Is. Not much reaction to the feds. I mean, pretty much, I mean, the Fed was almost certain to pause. I mean, it was probably baked, it was baked in the cake. I mean, here was here was yesterday, uh, the day before we had some wild gyrations. Like I said, today the markets, the ten, uh, the five and a half coupons up 34 basis points. The treasury is the US 10 year treasury is down eight basis points. Uh, this is the day before. We had some pretty interesting gyrations before the day before. I mean, we had this one day. We have a, a range of on the on this uh, five and a half coupon ninety or on the uh, actually uh, uh, yeah on the ninety on the coupon we have a range of ninety nine fifty nine up to one hundred thirty six. So that's about it. What uh, seventy five. 80 basis point move in, in one day of up or down, you know, the trading velocity. So you see these law, you see the, oh shoot, hold on one second. That wasn't supposed to do that. You see these large candles, you know, these large gaps here that those are large trading days that we're seeing, you know, the bonds move around in wild swings. They might open, you know, negatively, but then they come back. It's just kind of interesting. But if you pull back this year, I mean, we're still still kind of stuck in this range. So, you know, a lot of short-term volatility, but still stuck in the longer term, this gap, this, you know, this panel that I call it. And, um, you know, the Fed's pretty much, you know, the Fed's, they updated their dot plot. It's just kind of expectations of where they're going to move it. But it wasn't really, um, you know, what I'm, what I'm seeing is that the market is di just seems like it's digesting the news a lot better. We're not having these shock and awe days where, you know, it's down 80 or 85 basis points. So everything's been kind of getting baked into the cake the last six, seven, eight months. We're going to have short term, you know, swings in 20 or 30 days, but we're kind of stuck in this range. So well, it it's seems um, like they're not, they're not showing all their cards. I mean, he, you know, it's now, um, you know, there are people that look at what he says and compare the changes every time he has, you know, one statement that he makes and he goes in and changes a few sentences and yeah then so they're saying well if he'd have come out and said well we're gonna we're gonna pause and uh but we're probably not gonna raise after that this would be a whole different ball game but he's he's oh, leaving yeah. it out there as an option for the traders to absorb and now we've got this pressure of the treasury borrowing trying to borrow more money coming from the same source and it's putting some pressure on rates um, so I'm really anxious to talk to Barry Habib about that. We have him on the show and that's going to air next Wednesday evening. So we're going to give you plenty of advance notice because we've got some really, I think, great questions out for him and, and uh, looking forward to that. But um, let's jump to insurance yeah, for a moment here. I think it'd be good. Um, I think. Oh, go ahead, Pat. No, no, go ahead. No, no, sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so we're seeing these headlines, right? Um, State Farm no longer writing new policies in California. Um, um, who else bailed out? The All state. Uh, All state. They're mm -hmm. not canceling policies, but they're not renewing them, and they're not writing new products because of the cost and because of uh, all the damage out there. And the fire's the same with Florida, and there's quite a few other states as well. So. We thought we'd bring on Mr. Tom Sanchez here, who is a 
insurance are you just are you an insurance agent tom is that how we describe you so. yes sir all right tell us a little bit about your background and uh and what you're seeing and hearing um well i started insurance back in 02 or 03 had my own little agency for a couple of years till the market took a dump and i uh, got back into it about eight nine years ago and uh the markets like you said state farm all state are really affecting various states such as florida louisiana California, things like that, due to uh, hurricanes, mudslides, floods, wildfires, all this stuff that's affecting all, everybody's rates. So um, there's a lot of stuff involved. And the only three companies out of 52 companies in Florida in 2022 made a profit. In, and it really affected the industry like nationwide. So, Well, what are the implications for us in Arizona? Uh, we got supply issues. We've got all kinds of issues going on as well as you guys see being realtors, uh, the builder issues, the delays and everything, and the price of insurance just with my clients alone, just going up a couple hundred bucks a year for home insurance and a couple hundred bucks every six months for the auto insurance. It's really affecting the industry dramatically. So auto insurance is climbing as well. What's the main driver for that? Uh, supply issues. Like I just got in a wreck in my car a couple months ago and uh, it took about two and a half months to fix it just because of supplies. So. Yeah, my brother got his car broken into last week in this small town that I'm at, and uh, um, they're waiting for the parts. Yep, that's a big so, issue. It's yeah. just a spiral downhill. So, so I, I also heard that Progressive isn't writing new policies in Arizona right now or in the Phoenix metro area because of uh, theft, for example, on Hyundai Sonatas, yes. that type of thing. So they've got the specific and the vehicles. Yeah, some specific vehicles that they don't want to renew their policies on or um, take, you know, any new claim, new policies on. True. Yes. Well, it, go ahead, Jackie. I was just going to say it's so interesting, you know, as a consumer and even being an agent, um, I never even put thought to supply issues being part of the driving force for the insurance rates. Yeah. And it's crazy. I mean, I'm hearing about you know, I was doing some research. I was hearing about all kinds of states like Texas and Colorado and um, Idaho. And I mean, it's it's a lot bigger than I anticipated. I, I just didn't even imagine that. And then, you know, it's like you've got rates so high, you've got prices so high, and then you've got insurance that's so high. I mean, it's really affecting the affordability for people. It hey, is. Tom, it is. Gonna... you're kind of cutting out when you talked about the supply. I'm I'm still confused. When, when you say supply, what do you mean? I mean I'm being, I'm dumbing this down. Like parts. I, I, like you're parts, cutting out. Supplies. Why would that cause insurance companies to pull out? In time? Um, for the, for like Is Florida, that, you said Louisiana. The why? Yeah, for Florida, Louisiana, California, things like that. Wildfires, mudslides, the uh, hurricanes that they're getting affected. A, a lot of stuff is affecting those supplies and the lack of, uh, employees that they're able to get and the cost of labor has gone up dramatically as well so i've also got one insurance company that started adding on an extra ten dollars every endorsement that we're doing and it's become a major uh thing to where we need to move them out of that sometimes to uh save people rates so i got well, a question also, california having you know they're having the same problems with mudslides and with uh fires but they're they're, they're kind of they've been hit for a few years on the regulation side as well, haven't they? That doesn't give them yes, a lot of wiggle room. And so they're just telling the state, we're, we're just not gonna play in your sandbox anymore. Yep, California is a big bureaucracy and uh, it's affecting a lot of stuff in the, the back ends. Okay, so we're not right. feeling that here in Arizona? A little no, bit? No, we're seeing it, it's just a residual that we see. So it affects one state and it carries over to the other states. Yeah, they say because it's Because of profit margins. Correct. They say it's not supposed to because of location and our, we really don't have much except for heat here, you know, and oh, uh, we have fires. Yeah. Heat fires, all that stuff. And we've gotten a dramatic amount of rain this last year. And a lot of these places that haven't kept up have uh, caused these not mudslides here in Arizona, but it does affect a lot of stuff. Cause yeah. you know, one thing uh, I've, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tom. I was going to say, even with, if you see our forests, they uh they can't keep up on that stuff because they're not getting rid of enough wood and causing fire danger in that as well so and that's exactly where i was going um when i travel up to flagstaff which i do quite frequently because my daughter goes to school up there 
Um, if you look off to the sides, and even we go up camping off of Young Road and that type of thing, you'll see all over the place where they've plowed and pulled together the debris and the old trees and that type of thing and the clearings and stuff to keep our forest grounds cleaner, um, which is what California is supposed to have been doing and they haven't been. Um, so that does actually um, help fight the fires, not get so big or like even happen. So um, we are doing a good job, I think, of that up north from what you can see just from driving on the freeways up to Flagstaff or even up towards, um, you know, Sholo and uh, camping up on the rim and stuff. So, Tom, is there a, is there an expectation of a, of a percentage of increase that the insurers can expect to see over the next year or two? Um, farmers took an increase in 2022 of like 19.6%. Nationwide insurance took one of 14.87%, and uh, Progressive even took a small hit of 6.1%, uh, roughly. So the insurance companies are affecting it. The only the only states that are not getting affected as, as much as we are are like, uh, what do you call it, Maine, Delaware, Michigan, Kansas, things like that. Um, there's some of the wow. lower areas that um, don't get affected as much. Nobody lives there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So I have what, a so, question. Go ahead, what Jackie. Ha what happens, say, for instance, you can't, and, and I was surprised because I looked on that FEMA map and Maricopa County was actually red. It wasn't the dark red like California. But what happens when somebody can't get homeowner's insurance? I know California has the private insurance company that, that picks it up. Yes, and they're supposedly do. like 50, 60% or something more expensive. Yes. And then I know there's some regulation in California, but is that having any kind of effect here? Um, yeah, it is because um, the older part of Phoenix does have the flood zone still. Um, our builders have done a really good job. If you notice that the parks are under level of what the streets are and the streets are under level of what the houses are. So the uh, these developers have done a really good job to keep these floodplains going and make, sh and make a, a buyer not need flood insurance as much. But these older communities are the ones that are really getting affected with flood insurance and things like that. So that's a very interesting map to look at. And it's pretty, I, I think anybody could have guessed it. Yeah, Florida, you know, nothing yep. like hurricanes. Louisiana. And then Louisiana and Houston. Um, mm -hmm. And then you get over here and like to Jackie's point, kind of surprising that Maricopa County's got this, this color here. Um, Los Angeles, you know, deep red. And then uh, as you get in the northern Those are California. What's that? Those are higher risk areas. Yeah. And Las Vegas, that's a little surprising. Yes. When it comes to weather, I mean, there's not a whole lot that happens in Las Vegas. So what would be the explanation for that? It looks like around Tahoe area. I think we just had a big rain, a lot of rain for all the area, for even Arizona, California, New Mexico, all that. We had one of the highest amounts of rainfall in the last year. Well, Las Vegas does have flooding, so maybe that's some of that. Some, I know some areas up there that were built very poorly, and uh, one of the managers used to work for me up there had, um, he said his whole street just turned into a river, and it went down into the basement of one of his neighbor's homes, just uh -huh. like a deluge, and, uh, they, and they just built it poorly, not enough, not enough depth, and so maybe there's a lot of that going on that's raising that. So, uh, so being a consumer what for the average person out there what would uh you recommend um you know chop around i mean what are some tips that we can give a couple people in terms of insurance looking for insurance or what to look for you know deductibles anything any tips you can give people yes um i'm really professional in that part and we've got my agency we are a uh we're not captive like all state state farm things like that we're we work for the the client so we've offered like progressive nationwide um the general even all kinds of different companies that we shop around for and find the best rate for you and please remember that if you uh do have a claim on your house call your insurance agent first because if it's less than the deductible or right around the deductible they're going to ding you for a claim and uh if they do that your rates are going to go up over the next three to five years um, so please be in contact with your agents, which is one thing that I do with my clients. Um, I ask them to call me before a, uh, 
a claim. So that way we worry about the deductible and we worry about the amount of money that's going to be to fix it and find out if the uh, if it's going to be feasible for them to to work it on their own or to uh, go through the claims department on the insurance. So I do try to be a value to my clients. So you're kind of like, uh, so they I'm can call you and tell you what's going on with kind of like me calling an underwriter and saying, Hey, this is kind of what I've got. What do you need for the file? They're like, well, here's what you need. Let's not, yep. you know, put that in the file. You know, some underwriters will work with you and say, Hey, I don't need to see some stuff, you know, or, you know, don't show up, you know, they work with you. Correct. And we want to just educate our clients the best that we can to uh, alleviate those claims because it also affects our agency on that. And it affects everybody's rates. You know what I mean? If we can avoid something, it's going to help everybody out in the long run. So that's, so that's the key thing I'm hearing is call you first. It's kind of like when people going out looking at new homes, you um, you know, go in with your realtor. It doesn't cost you any more. Uh, exactly. we, can, yeah. we can spot something. We can help you avoid some pitfalls. Uh, definitely. And the, le the less amount of claims you have in your policy, the better your rate's going to be and the better your credit is. And whichever zip code you live in is going to affect your rates as well. So there's a lot of good stuff going on with this. Very good. interesting. Well, again, thank Tom, you. thank you for being on the show. It's uh, great to have you as a guest and uh, answer those questions for us. I hope people find it helpful. And uh, and if there's any changes in the industry, we would like to reach out to you again. So no, I would love to come back on. Thank you so much for the invite. Have a good day. All right. Take care, Tom. Take care, Tom. Thanks, Tom. That was that was great stuff. I, I didn't know. Um, you know, I did read, you know, about California's regulation. That's been a problem for a long time. But you just don't realize how much it spreads out to other areas of the country. Mm -hmm. I was surprised so, when I started digging into it. Yeah. I had, speaking of new construction, my niece and her husband went out and looked at a place over in the uh, south of Seattle by, by about an hour, hour and a half. And, and uh, they were all excited about this lot and everything. And they wanted to send me the contract to review. They didn't go in with an agent. Well, she called the other day. She's all upset because the guy said, Oh, yeah, I didn't realize there was a lot premium for that corner lot that you had. So uh, that's 20,000 more. Jeez. And and th and they're not willing to budge or work with her. And I think an agent would have gone in there and spotted that right away and said, so there's no lot premium for this one. Yeah. You know, so I just and I'm not going to lecture her, but I was like, well, you know, I can probably... <laughs> there's another very unusual thing going on up here that I that I heard about from my brother. Uh, he they're they're pretty active in the Airbnb industry. I mean, they only have one now, but their neighbor across the street, has got a really nice house on a lake um, just outside of town, about 15 miles. So they had a couple guests come up there and uh, stay. And they had just gotten engaged three days earlier and they went out on kayaks and on the lake. And this lake's really cold and they didn't wear life preservers. Oh no. And his kayak tipped over and he, he sank like a rock. I never saw him again. He just what? what? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I mean, usually when I you step over, you, at least you're paddling and you hang on the kayak. He fell over and gone. And oh my god. The, yeah, really sad. So Airbnb jumps in and and they did some really cool things, but then they did some really awful things. I'm gonna tell you about. They so they jumped in and they said, okay, we're gonna put you up in town. Um, you know, and while you're waiting, her mother was gonna fly out from the East Coast. And the people that own the Airbnb, they went down and sat with her and stayed with her. And uh, so they were footing that expense. They made sure that the, that the owners of the Airbnb were getting paid for the duration of their scheduled stay. But here's the kicker, which I don't get. Um, they canceled all future bookings and just sent people notice that they were canceled and didn't tell them why. They just canceled now, these are people that are planning on coming from all over parts of the country. It's really hard to find vacation rentals up here in the summer. And they just get noticed that they're canceled and no explanation. And uh, they right. haven't been very, um, I don't know all the details, but they haven't been very forthcoming with with the owner either. And of course, to her fault, she, she hasn't pressed it very much. But you would think that they'd say, well, you know, we're temporarily canceling this because, you know, I don't know, there's an investigation. We're looking into a. Um, a tragic accident. Body? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Just, the guy bizarre. sunk. The guy just tipped over. He just sunk. Gone. Push. You can't drudge this lake. It's it's. There's 
there's things at this bottom right. bottom of this lake they'll never find. It's it's oh. 13 miles long. Um, it's extremely deep. It's glacier fed. Um, you know, when you swim in it in the summertime, you still got to be pretty brave because it is freaking cold. Well, look, um, really looking forward, Pat. Let's drill down uh, tomorrow and uh, what's yep. going on with the rates and the information. And uh, and I know that we're going to be getting ready to interview Barry Habib. So looking forward to that. And again, I want to thank Tom for coming on and helping us with this insurance mess that we're seeing. And hopefully we can, uh, you know, help some people along the way. So other than that, everybody have a fabulous Thursday. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.